Hello, team. All right, welcome to video two of uh, just some real preliminary technical information for RhinoCam for the CNC here at the Sam Fox School. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over three axis milling. If you haven't seen the previous video on profile cutting, please, please, please watch it first. I'm going to reference things in that video. Um, so I want you to be on board with everything that's happening here. Let's get going. Uh, so here is my Rhino file. Um, in this instance, I'm pretending to be a student who is coming in with a topo. Uh, you guys all do a really nice job of coming in with these, uh, you know, Rhino files that extend in infinite directions with infinite iterations of models. Unfortunately, um, for our purposes, we really only want uh, just the thing that we're cutting. So pretend, you know, you've got stuff way out in space here. Um, that you just maybe can't see. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna figure out what model it is you want to cut. If it's this one, we're gonna highlight it, type invert, which will invert our selection. And we're gonna hide all the rest. That way we don't delete it. We got it back there for later. Um, we only want to show the computer and show the CNC uh, what it is that we're cutting right now. So again, if Rhino Cam's not open, come up to Rhino Cam and open up the mill. Um, we, in the previous video, went through all of this stuff over here and defining the stock material. So I'm going to go through it real quick. I'm pretending that I am cutting a 12 by 12 model out of three inch thick foam, uh, hopefully a tooling foam, because I want to give myself the best possible model. Um, so I'm going to come up here and hit stock, 12 by 12 by three, hit OK. My stock is set to the zero point, so it's not necessarily over my thing yet. Uh, we're going to align the stock material. Um, and let's take a look at, since we are uh, now in a different type of cutting, what it looks like to align to the top of our uh, stock material. So this means that we have three inch foam and two inch model. Um, we're going to be, if we align it to the top, we're going to have a lot less material to remove, but we're going to have an inch of uh, extra material down here at the bottom. If that is okay with you, this would be a faster way of milling. Uh, because it doesn't have to remove as much. If you really want only the thing that you modeled, we're going to align our stock to the bottom and watch it shift down here. And we're going to keep it centered. We're going to hit OK. We're going to see from all viewports that this thing is situated right here on the bottom of our stock. We're going to align the world coordinate system because we started cutting right now uh, and we squared up this piece to the corner of the machine. Uh, Rhino cam and the CNC would start cutting out here in space over nothing. So we're going to align the world coordinate system to the stock box that we just defined. Super important. Again, I cannot emphasize this enough. This is one of the quickest ways to ruin your stock material uh, is to not select the lowest Z. So we have to click lowest Z in the southwest corner. Big, big move here. Awesome. So this looks perfect for me. Um, now that I've got all my stuff oriented, I'm going to come into my machining operations. Uh, we're not going to think about two axis anymore. We are in three axis mode. Um, so open up this three axis advanced milling, and we're going to be greeted with a bunch of those real nice icons again. Uh, and I like for the first pass to be this horizontal roughing. A horizontal roughing pass means that it's going to work its way from the inside out, and it's going to rough out the shape, meaning it's not really interested in making your shape look nice or cutting down to the model surface. It is just trying to get rid of the bulk material that is in the way. So we're gonna click on that, and I am going to select the bottom of my model because I have to give it a, a region to cut within. And so I know that the bottom of my model is homogenous uh, if at any point in time you have a model that sort of like dips in or something, I would you know I would uh, consider drawing a rectangle around the outside just so the mill knows exactly what to cut out. Um, so if I click curve and edge regions, you're going to notice that I have to now individually click each side. This is because I'm now working with a three-dimensional form. If I'm cutting a square, uh, something that has a square base like this, clicking four times is not the end of the world, um, but if you are cutting something that's going to be more complicated, uh, which I'm sure you will, uh, we're going to do something a little bit different to make life easier for ourselves. Um, 
I'm going to shift control select the bottom here. So I only select that face. I'm going to duplicate the face border, giving myself one closed curve around the outside. Uh, I could also have drawn a rectangle, but um, for your purposes, if you're cutting something that's more organically shaped, duplicating the face border is going to be the way to go. So I'm going to come back here, uh, open up horizontal roughing, select curve and edge region, and I'm just able to click that one curve one time. Um, cool. So I'm going to hit enter, select the tool. Again, in this hypothetical situation, I'm cutting out of three inch foam. So I'm going to use a foam flat mill. Flat mill is uh, uh, flat along the end and really good for roughing passes. This one is foam, uh, labeled as foam because we only use it for foam. It's incredibly long um, and foam is less dense and is uh, likely to give you less vibration than cutting something like wood. I really wouldn't advise using this bit with something like a hardwood or plywood. Um, so that's why it says foam. It's also a half inch thick, so it's going to remove a lot of material. Our feeds and speeds should load in here. These numbers are subject to change. Um, we're going to click load from tool just to make sure that it's right. And our clearance plane is set to quarter inch over the stock material. Um, if you had a two inch model and you only put two inches in for your stock material, um, the machine would uh, potentially plow through that top inch of your three inch material if you don't label it correctly. So that's another reason why it's really, really important for us to measure our stock material when we're putting it on the table so we know exactly what we're cutting through. Advanced cutting parameters. Uh, I have nothing to mess with right here right now, nor do I have anything to touch and engage or retract. And then cut levels. This is where we define um, the step down control distance. That is uh, to say, uh, the amount that the tool moves down per pass in the roughing sequence. We do not ever, like I said in the last video, want to step over or step down more than 50% of the tool's diameter or the radius. Um, and so we are going to step down 50% of the diameter, which we'll label here. And we don't want to step over more than 50% of the diameter here in the cutting parameters tabs. Uh, I like to set my roughing tool distance step over to be 45%. And remember, the stock material should, or stock value should still read this because we're giving ourselves a little bit of material that we can then come back and cut through for our finishing pass. All right, let's hit generate and see what it does. Oh, we got to turn on our tool path visibility. There it is. Look at that. Uh, like I said in the last video, Every single toolpath that we create must be simulated. So we're going to play it um, with these longer toolpaths that you're going to end up watching in person anyway. I don't necessarily want to watch this, so I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to skip to the end. That way RhinoCam uh, can remove all the material without making me watch it all. And this is what we will look like after our roughing pass. Cool stuff. Um, then I need to make this look a little bit better. And I'm going to do a finishing pass. Click back on the program tab. You're going to see uh, our model again underneath there and how the tool path interacts with the model surface. And we're going to click on machining operations and come over here to three and a half or three axis advanced roughing or advanced milling again and uh, click on parallel finishing. There's two different kinds of finishing. There's parallel and horizontal finishing. Uh, you can click on them and see what they do. They do a little bit different things. But for this one, I'm gonna stick with parallel finishing. This should already be selected because I had it highlighted when I opened up that thing. But if it isn't, I can just select curve and edge region again. Hit enter. Come in here to my tool. Now I have a long uh, ball nose for finishing foam that I like to use. Uh, I like it also because it's a little bit thicker and can get the job done a little bit quicker. Um, if we were using, this is a 3 8 inch diameter. Uh, if we were using a quarter inch ball nose, it would take a lot longer. Um, but for our purposes, 
uh, if we'd be milling out of a foam. We're going to need to finish it anyway with a little bit of joint compound or something and sanding it. Uh, so I'm not too, uh, too worried about it. Speeds and speeds, load from tool again. Clearance plane should be the same, good. Sorting, I'm not messing with. Advanced cut parameters, I'm not going to touch either. Entry and exit should be fine the way that it is. And then our Z containment. Here is a crucial function that you must check every time that you create a new job. And that is how we specify the lowest Z as zero. Uh, sometimes you will open this up and it'll say some other number. We need to make sure that the tool does not cut below the zero plane that is highlighted here. Um, if we do not select that, the machine uh, thinks that it's okay just to cut below the uh, table if it needs to, and that can get pretty dangerous pretty quick. All right, the last tab is the cut parameters. Cut parameters is uh, going to be where we tell the machine the uh, total percentage step over of the finishing bit. Um, this is going to be down here where it says percent tool step over. It is currently set to 25%, and I want to show you what that looks like. We're going to see our tool path. It's going to look something like this. And then when we simulate that, it's going to look something like this which for this model seems to be okay. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Um, if you, uh, You'll see down here on the edge though, we're getting a little bit of these, uh, these little ridges in here from where the tool is stepping over. Um, I wanna show you how that changes when we change our step over. Cut parameters, let's turn this down to 15. 15 will usually give you a pretty high resolution finish. We're going to that, see how that increase the number of blue lines, decrease the space between the blue lines. And let's simulate that again to the end. You're going to see these ridges get closer together, meaning that it's going to give you a uh, finer quality surface finish. Um, but it's also going to take a lot longer than a 25% step over but I simulated it and it looks like it's going to play just well. Again, it's gonna do this uh, for however long it takes. If you're working with a bigger piece of material uh, or a higher, lower degree step over, lower percentage step over, excuse me, this is going to take a lot longer. Um, perfect, so let's stop that and post it. Uh, again, if we were to post this right now, uh, Rhino cam works from top to bottom, so my horizontal roughing would happen after my parallel finishing, uh, which would make my horizontal roughing useless. Um, so we need to drag the parallel finishing underneath the horizontal roughing. And there's many occasions where you may end up having uh, multiple roughing passes or multiple finishing passes, depending on the shape and uh, you know needs of your model. So you're going to want to organize this in a way that makes sense to you. And we're going to highlight setup one here. I'm going to click post and I'm going to post it uh, to the CNC, uh, naming it something like demo one. Hit post and it'll pop up something like this. And that looks good to me. Um, yeah. So this should get you pretty well started on your way to three axis milling on the CNC.